you know, y'all, this is uh, Uncle Fester with the Shade Tree Savalas. Um, doing a second part on my the chainmail series that I'm trying to work on. Uh, my son, he, he uh, put, tried to put on my iron wig the other day, and he liked it, but he said it was way too heavy. He said it hurt, hurt, hurt his head, so I've decided that I'm going to sit down and try to make him a headpiece like mine, only I'm going to make it out of aluminum. And this is... This right here is just aluminum wire that I've stripped and I've made jump rings out of it. If you want to find out how I make jump rings, look at the first video. But to make a cough, which is what the headpiece is called, it's called a cough, you have to start off with six nine by nine triangles. So I'm going to show you how to make the triangle, how I make the triangles. And is it, I start off with a coat hanger, I split it open and I have nine closed jump rings. And all I do is just thread them onto the, the hanger. And this, to me, this is the, is, there are other ways to do this. I've seen a lot of other different ways to do it. You can put uh, the four in ones and all that. But for me, this, is, this was the e easiest way that I learned how to do it. So you, you put it on your hanger. And you want to make sure that you have all of your jump rings going in one direction. You see how they're all laying in the same direction. That's very important. So I've got nine, okay? And over here I have what I have my open jump rings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, to start with the first time, I'm going to take two jump rings, two of the rings that's, that's on here. And I'm going to take this one ring and I'm going to take this and I want to thread those two two rings together and I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to close the jump ring. Now hey, let me get close up. That's what it looks like. I got two two rings and one one ring and it's all closed up. Now as I continue I move one jump ring down and now I'm going to connect this ring right here and this ring right here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come up under this one, if I can, and I'm going to run it through there, and I'm going to put this other jump ring on there, well, if it'll cooperate with me, and then I'm simply going to close that ring up. Now, when you get these things laid down, and you lay it down, You should have one row of rings going this way and one row of rings going that way. If that's what you've got when you're doing it, then you're doing it okay. So now I have three to two. Now I'm going to move another jump ring down and, and it's, the same, it's the same exact process. I'm going to come under the last ring and I'm going to weave it in and I'm going to weave the next ring over it and I'm simply going to close it. And there again, when you lay it flat, and you got all the rings going in one direction, you got one, one, one row of, of rings that will go in one direction, and you have another row of rings that will go in the other direction. And as long as you've got that going on, then you've got, you got it going right. Now see, every now and again, when you first get started off, it'll want to sit there and try to try to be honorable. Sometimes you have to start over, but most of the time, if you do it right and they don't get twisted, which I'm afraid that's what happened with these. I think they just got twisted. Yep, and that happens. Sometimes I can get them straightened out, and sometimes it's just easier just to start over again. I don't think I'm gonna have to start over again on that one because I know it. But, but what you really want to try to do is keep things as flat as possible. So my first two are still all right. Here we go. Now, there again. Under the ring, I'm still not there. 
quite far out. It's opened up enough. Go under. Bring it into the next ring. And then very simply, you close it up. And then you bring the next ring. And you see how the ring is turned? As long as you got your, all your rings, your top rings should be going in one direction. Your bottom rings should be going in the next direction. Here again, you just continue the process. Bring the next ring under. And there again, the less you move it around, the, the better off it will be. And see, now the process is pretty much far. Once you get that far, far along, it gets harder to mess it up as far as from one, one side to the other. Here again, you just continue in the pattern. And that's the thing about chainmail. Once you get the pattern figured out, as long as you stick to the pattern and you follow the pattern and you pay attention to the pattern, everything's pretty easy. So that's the first line. And all you're going to do is you're just going to continue down the line and it, as you go down, it'll get smart. The, the next row of rings will have eight and then the rings, the next row of rings will have seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then you'll have your nine by nine. So next time we'll come back, I'll hopefully I'll have a couple of uh, nine by nines and we'll put them together and we'll see what it looks like from there. This is Uncle Fester with the Shade Tree Survival signing off.